Uh, so an important way to build spaces from other spaces is by taking the product. Okay, so for examples here, as of course, informally R cross R will give you the plane once we have real numbers. And if I look at S1 cross R is cylinder. So if we know what a circle is, so it's here's an S1 and here's the real number. And S1 cross S1 will be something more interesting. It will be the torus, which is the surface of a rubber tube. So it's drawn like this. So this direction is one S1 and this direction is the other S1. Okay, so as a set, so, so let firstly let's look at pairs. So suppose let X, Y be topological spaces. Okay, then the product x cross y is the set, well, x, y, and of course, little x in x and y in y, no surprise there, it's just the product of sets as you would have. We have to specify with the topology. Now, if you think of R squared, we had various metrics on it, but they depended on metrics on R, usually, with one exception, which is the rectangles. Namely, if I just knew what were intervals in R, then products of the interval here and an interval here gives you this. But again, we don't even know what are open intervals, but if you took open sets, then their products will give open sets. So that is the idea of defining the topology. So the topology then is going to be the set omega is going to be A cross B and A in X open and B in Y open. Perhaps U and V would have been better notation for open sets. So these are rectangles, ah, but this is not a topology because the union of rectangles is not a, a rectangle, but with basis. Okay, and the proposition here is that this is indeed a basis. So to be a basis, the union has to be everything, which is easy. The only thing we have to check is really that the intersection of finite collection of uh, such open sets is open. So let me now call them U1 cross V1, intersection U2 cross V2, and un cross vn. Well, it's easy to see this is the first coordinate has to be in u1 and u2 and etc. and un. And the second has to be in v1, it has to be in v2, it has to be in vn. And conversely, so this is actually just u1 intersection un cross v1 intersection vn. Okay, so I should not really call this omega, let's call this b, it's a basis. <coughs> So this is also in B. Okay, so this is a basis for a topology. So this is nice. We can see a couple of other things here. Obviously, we have a homeomorphism. And what would be called a canonical homo homeomorphism because it involves no choices at all. Canonical homeomorphism. There are ways of formalizing this canonical process, but they are not relevant here. Just observe, it's utterly natural between x cross y uh, and they're equal to y cross x. Namely, I take x and y and I send it to yx. This is a homeomorphism. Okay. So it's now natural to ask, what about associativity? What if I'm taking the product of three spaces? By the way, it's important to take them indexed because in many, many examples, it'll be many copies of the same space or same space twice and a different space another time and so on. So this is saying in some sense, product is commutative. In a precise sense, it's commutative. What about uh, associativity? What if you multiply three spaces? Actually, we can do better than that. Often the nicest way of proving associativity is to have a construction which involves finitely many, which will coincide with the given ones. Okay, So namely now uh, finite products. Here again, things are easy. So let x1 
Xn be topological spaces. Then X1 cross Xn is the set. Well, it's the set set product, <laughs> but I'll just write a spell it out because it's clumsy to say otherwise underlying set. It's the set this with topology with again we give the basis basis B let me write it as V1 cross etc cross Vn where Vi can contain in Xi is open and exactly like in the case of 2 we see that proposition this is a basis and by construction we have the following proposition if I look at A cross B cross C this equals A cross B cross C which is equal to A cross, just the three-way product where equals means there is a canonical so you can ignore the canonical phrase there is a canonical homeom homeomorphism you can just say they are homeomorphic spaces okay the proof is entirely straightforward as sets these are all equal to each other and you see the definition the basis will simply give you the same basis whether you took A cross B cross C, A cross B cross C which are all the cuboids uh, of the appropriate uh, size. Okay and so here's a theorem worth uh, mentioning again I'm not going to prove in detail Rn cross Rm equals Rn plus M. So the proof is of course uh, there's a natural identification as sets so check that the topologies coincide. Since this whole course has been full of similar arguments I will just say exercise and draw the picture in case of R cross R. Okay so the picture in case of R cross R is here we have our if I draw my axis again so here we have R squared and R squared with its usual topology has uh, so we have to show that the topologies coincide so we have to say that things which are open in one set are topology are open in the other but as we saw we say uh, we sing by checking basis of each are open in the other. So here the basis of the right hand side is balls of radius r. Here it is products of balls. So in specific case there will be rectangles. Formulas wise it's almost the same as this uh, specific case. So suppose we have uh, uh, the basis of one of them which is a ball. Okay, So let's draw a circle. I want to show that this is open in the other basis and we have done this so namely if we take a point here we want to show that this is in the interior with respect to the product basis and with respect to the product basis means that we need a rectangle containing this point inside the circle and we do have such a thing and conversely if I'm given a rectangle and I'm given a point inside it then I can find a circle which contains this point and which is contained in the rectangle. You could as well take it centered around. Here in fact you could take the square with this as center and the right size. So this is a writing this formally is just a fairly easy uh, exercise in uh, just using the triangle inequality. So so far so good we have some examples before turning to the case of infinite products where things get more subtle 
we want to understand a little more about the finite products to understand how to model things in general. So these products are useful both as geometric constructions and technically when we are using, uh, we are going to prove when topological spaces come, topologies come from metric spaces and so on and we'll also get examples of things that are not first countable using products but that those come in from big products. So to understand how to make these big products, but first let's just look at something associated to them. So we look at projections. So we have pi, which will map this product, i equals 1 to n of xi, which I think I previously wrote as just x1 product xn, so the most succinct way of writing it is i equals 1 to n of xi. And writing it this way, we get rid of dependence on the order. Eventually, you can have any index set. So we have a pi which maps, okay, let's say pj, which maps this to xj. Okay, so this is, so pj, of course, we know is x1, xj, uh, sorry, xn maps to xj. Okay, let's clear this up. So what can we say about this? We can say this is continuous. Why is this? this is continuous as if uh, u is contained in xj uh, is open pj inverse of u okay so let's call this uj even though it doesn't matter is going to be equal to well only the jth coordinate has to be in uj. So the first coordination is x1 cross so and so. Only jth coordinate is uj and everything else is xi. Okay, but these are also open. So this is a, in fact a basic open set. Yeah. So conversely, if omega is a topology, on this set, okay, this time we just want the same underlying set such that each pj is continuous. Okay, so then for all j in, so, for, so then, well, what do we know? So given j and uj contain in xj, so j is 1 is less than j is less than n and uj is contained in xj. We have, but continuity tells you pj inverse of uj, which remember is x1 plus uj plus xn is open. But now suppose we are given, so suppose we are given a whole bunch of open sets. Suppose we are given u1, u2, un with uh, u j contained in x j open uh, for all j okay then well we know the intersection of open sets is open and indeed u1 cross u n is actually the intersection j equals 1 to n of p j inverse of u j because being in this product means the jth coordinate is con contained in u j so this is open so what is the conclusion we get here? So the conclusion is that any topology where pj's are, so pj's are continuous and in any topology where pj's are open, uh, sorry, pj's are continuous, the sets that are open in the product topology must be open in that. So product conclusion is that the product topology is the coarsest such topology. So the product topology is the initial topology such that pj is continuous for all j. And another thing we saw implicitly is the sets x1 cross so and so but with one uj. 
So Xn form a subbasis. The final thing we'll see, and we'll actually prove it in the infinite case, is actually to is that uh, the uh, function is continuous if and only if its compositions with Pj is continuous. A function into the product is continuous. That is closely related to the fact that this is an initial topology. Okay, and these things, this is what will generalize to infinite products. So the infinite product will still be the initial topology where all Pj's are continuous. What it will not be is the product of all Uj's. That is what is called, I mean, allowing arbitrary collection of Uj's. We'll see that topology, which is called the box topology, is actually quite badly behaved. Well, so we'll see an example which will illustrate why we don't actually want the box topology. So next we'll turn to infinite collections and define the product topology and look at some properties and also define the box topology.